the Noctua NH-U12S Chromax Black. It's a CPU cooler that we have for today's temperature testing. See how well it actually stacks up against other 120 millimeter tire style coolers. When choosing which test bed to put this one on, I was a little bit conflicted because it is a 120 millimeter tire style cooler. So that tells me it should be put against coolers in the same same size. But also with the price of this one, I feel that you shouldn't be using it on a low end system or a budget system. You should be using it on a higher end system, just simply due to the price of it. There will be timestamps in the description below. If it's a short part of the video you'd like to jump to, you're more than welcome to do so. There's some other links down there that may interest you. Don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way down to that description box. So without wasting a lot, of, a lot of your time, let's flip you over here and we'll see what test bed I actually put the CPU pool on. With. As far as the components to make up today's test bed, we have the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G. We will be using this as the CPU and the GPU, so we will be running integrated graphics on this processor today. That sets on top of the Gigabyte B550M DS3H motherboard. We have G-Skewer Ripped All 5 Series 16 gig, 2 8 gig sticks running at 3600 megahertz. This is the only thing in the system that is overclocked. We are running at 3600 megahertz speed. For storage, we have the Silicon Power 512 gigabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. To power everything in the system, we have the EVGA 500 BA 100 BA, which is a 500 watt, 80 plus Ron certified non-module power supply. And for the case, we have the Fractal Design Focus D Black ATX mid tire computer case. I did add another 120 millimeter fan in the back of this, along with the two pre-installed 120s in the front. I think that's pretty common with the way most people will run their computer. And for the cooler that we're putting it against today, we have the AMD Wraith Stealth Stock Cooler. We have the Arago Shadow Max CPU Cooler. We have the Up Here Black CPU Cooler with five heat pipe design. We have the Arago P6 CPU Air Cooler with six heat pipe design. We have the Vitro V5 Black CPU Air Cooler with five heat pipe design. We have the ID Cooling SE914 XT ARGB CPU Cooler for the four heat pipe design. We have the Cooler Master Hyper T4, which is a four heat pipe design. And of course we have the Noctua NHU12S Chromax Black Cooler as well, which is a five heat pipe design. So we ran down through the porch to make up today's test bed. Now we're going to go into how I do my testing and why I do it the way I do it. I run Cinebench R23 for a half hour stress test. I run it three times back to back. And because we are using the iGPU, we want that CPU to get as hot as we can. We're also running Heaven Benchmark in the background. That way the processor can produce as much heat as possible. Now since we ran down through the components to make up today's test bed, I went through how I do my testing and why I do it the way I do it. Let's flip you over and we'll look at the numbers and see how good this thing actually cools. We have the black, which is the max temperature. We have the average, it's the orange temperature. Starting down here at the bottom, we have the Wraith Stealth Cooler. The max was 95.6, the average was 93.3. The Shadow Max was 80.8, .8, and the average was 78.7. Up here, we had a max of 76.3, with an average of 71.6. There we go, P6, we had a max of 74.4 and the average of 70.8. Vitro V5, we have a max of 71.1 with the average of 68.9. We have the SE 914XT by ID cooling, the max was 70.9 and the average of 67.4. The Hyper T4, we got a 69.8 max with a 67.7 average. The NHU 12S, we have a max of 69 with the average of 66.7. At the day of filming, this thing runs about $80 here in the US for this particular air cooler. That's why at the beginning of the video, so I had a hard time trying to figure out which test bed to use this on because it is a 120 millimeter tower style cooler. But due to the price of it, I feel that this should be on a higher end CPU. After looking at them numbers, it don't perform much better, if any over the other 120 millimeter air coolers. It is all nice and black, which I enjoy. I like that myself. I know a lot of people like the ARGB, so that's something to take into consideration. A lot of the coolers that I put it against in today's video cost a lot less than what this one does and performs just about the same. But if you're looking for a nice, stable, sturdy built 
CPU core that's all black because you're doing a blacked out build or something like that, maybe consider this cooler, but you will be paying a little bit more for it than what I feel that it's worth. Of course, you are paying the Noctua tax, you're paying for the name brand of it. So you have to keep that in mind as well. There is two other videos on the channel about this CPU cooler. I have an unboxing where we take it out of the box and run down through the specs. I also have an installation guide on it for the AM4 socket. If you'd like to see the one of them videos, I'll link them up there for you. If you'd like to go check them out. This cooler does have a lot of good points to it, but I just don't think it's worth the extra money when you can get close to the same amount of performance for less money. There will be a link in the description below if you'd like to pick one of these up or like to have a little bit more information on it. Some other links down there that may interest you while you're down there. Don't forget the all have fun YouTube stuff on your way down that description box. You all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.